Welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos, where I teach beekeepers of all skill levels about the art and science of beekeeping. I'm a master beekeeper, and my articles have been published many times in magazines such as American Bee Journal, Bee Culture, Beekeeping Your First Three Years, and the Bee Buzz. Now let's get on with the lesson. Hello, today we're going to talk about the various hive tools, what the various components of them are, and then how to use them. So hive tools range anywhere from small handhelds that are about 5 to 6 inches long to ones that are about 12 inches long. In your apiary, it's a good idea to have a hive tool on every hive as much as you, when possible, so that you minimize spreading the disease from one hive to the other. If you buy them on Amazon, they're going to be uh, these larger size unless you get the small pocket hive tool. Um, but when you buy them off of Amazon or so other places like that online, you're typically going to pay about half the cost that you would at your bee stores. Um, so again, I typically buy mine online simply because they're a lot uh, inexpensive. All right, so what, first of all, we're going to talk about the first one, which is this pocket hive tool. And it has a scraper on one end used to scrape propolis and beeswax off your hive bodies and frames. It also is used to pry open the various hive bodies from each other. On the other end of all the hive tools, they'll have some either a, another scraper type that you can scraper in that you can scrape, or it'll have a form of a J hook. All right, and all hive tool have this hole with two slots on either end, and what that's used for is to lift nails out uh, of the hive body should you need to. All right, so that's your traditional uh, pocket hive tool. Again, most beekeepers don't use it simply because they're small uh, and they're not the greatest to use for, for leverage action should you need to. Next up are some of the small ones. This is a seven inch traditional L-shaped hive tool. It's kind of like a paint scraper. Um, Again, when you buy these hive tools, they're sharp, so be careful how you handle them so you don't slice uh, into your body, uh, especially if you're out in the apiary. If you accidentally slip, you could be in trouble fairly quickly. Again, this is mostly used for, again, you can use it to lift frames out if you want to, but I'll show you why I don't do here in a minute once I actually show you how to use it. I use it more for scraping it, uh, propolis off the hive components. Again, this is just another larger size. Again, when you find them on Amazon, uh, they're gonna be the larger size here again it's not a big deal it's i find it just as easy to work the smaller ones as the big ones and then you've got what we call a j hook a j hook by its very name has this little hook at the very end and it is excellent for pulling up frames and again i'll show it to you when i demonstrate it and on the other end you have a scraper and also it slides in between the high bodies and you can pry up with it um, to get the high bodies part and then you have gimmicky type what i call gimmicky type of hive tools that are a combination of the traditional L shape, as you can see this one is, and the J hook. I tried this a few times and I find it a little bit unwieldy to use, uh, a little cumbersome, so I personally don't use this. I use it for teaching now just to show people. Some people love them, I personally don't. So again, as you find out through your beekeeping journey that you're gonna find out what works for you. I personally love the J hook and the traditional L shape. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how they are used. So I'm gonna take my hive top off, and then I'm gonna use the, first the traditional L shape. Again, this this frame doesn't, this hive body doesn't have any bees in it, uh, and the frames you're gonna see when I pull one out, it has a lot of wax moths. Again, it's just used for, uh, for demonstration for today. Um, I would never use anything this nasty inside my own hives. But again, you get to, you'll get the concept on how to use it. So again, the, as I told you, the, the strengths to the traditional L shape is anytime you have any scraping action, this is the tool to use in my opinion, simply because you're gonna be able to scrape the propolis and beeswax off without damaging any of the components. Um, now the disadvantage to using this hive tool is it's tough to get underneath the frames between the end bar and the hive body, so it forces you to use the hive tool somewhere in the main horizontal portion of the frame, which will then cause you to punch, this tool will puncture the cells of the um, comb that's underneath, and that comb right at the top of the frame is almost always honey. So when you do that, you're gonna rupture those cells and cause honey to spill out, which creates a mess 
The bees will clean it up. It's not a big deal. They'll repair the cell. But again, I try not to have any more mess inside my hive than I need to. Um, again, and then the other purpose of it is that you can simply insert it in between the hive bodies like this. And again, I always do it from the back if I need to. Um, my first choice is always to use it from the back. But sometimes the bees will have it propolized so bad that you may have to actually do it um, in two to three corners. So I may actually pry it up like this, pop up one side, and I may come to the opposite corner and prop it up as well. All right, and again, you can use the same technique for the J-hook, just in between the high bodies, and then pop it up. Again, it's just a, a leverage action, pop it up. So in order to use this traditional L-shaped hive tool, again, I have to reach in, or, and again, you always wanna pull out the outermost frame first, so that's where the queen is less likely to be. So I'm gonna push all my frames over to the side. Again, you just simply, to move them across, you just simply put the, the uh, L-shaped hive tool in, and again, I generally hold the frames uh, as much as I can just to provide a little security. And then I push them until they rest against this back wall. If you're using the traditional J-hook, it's a similar action, you just put it in horizontal, and you see it's got this little uh, cutout area. So it's all again, I'm just using that leverage action to push the frames all the way up against the wall. So the way I'm gonna use this is, if the weather is cold, you're gonna see that the honeybees typically put propolis in between these in bar frames. And when it happens is it makes that propolis uh, more rigid. So during cold weather only or cooler weather, you wanna simply take your um, chisel portion of either high tool and push it down between the in bar tabs to break up that propolis. If you don't, you run the risk of breaking off the small tabs on the in bars. So again, in the summertime, when it's nice and hot out, you don't have to worry about that because the propolis will, will loosen up, kind of like chewing gum, um, becomes more pliable. Uh, I'll only do this during the colder months. Again, just push it down, push it down in between them just to break that propolis. And then from there, you can simply do a twisting action with either high tool to kind of separate the, the frames a little bit. So then to actually pull the frame out, I'm gonna to have to take this hive tool and go down somewhere on the um, horizontal portion of the frame. I'm gonna push it in just underneath the lip of the uh, frame. I'm gonna rotate it up. And when I do, I'm grasping it with my fingers toward the back here. From there, I'm gonna to go to the opposite end and go underneath the frame and then pull it up. As soon as it clears, as soon as this frame tab clears the high body. My technique is I raise it up on the rear here a little bit and push it forward until this tab can rest on the high body. And that what that allows me to do, it allows me to reach down and get better control of the frame with my fingers. And then, or I could even set the high tool aside at that point because it's resting on the other end. I've got positive control in this. Again, I go at an angle so that any bees that are trapped between the end bar and the high body aren't trapped. That's just my technique. Again, so I reach down and I grasp it with my fingers. I level it back out so I don't inadvertently crush the queen should she happen to be uh, next to this frame. And I lift it straight out. And you'll see by my demonstration here, what I was talking about when it's horizontal um, like this, because of this hive tool's limitations, you have to go in right under the, under the lip here. Again, right where the honey is going to be. So you're going to burst those cells. Um, Again, this tool was a great tool for scraping. The disadvantage, as, as I said, is when your frame sets like this, it's tough to get in between the in bar and the high body. So you have to come on the horizontal. That's why I don't like to use this as a tool to pull out frames. I use it for its scraping abilities, which it's excellent for. All right, so the next one is the J hook. Love this tool. This is my favorite hive tool. I would bet, if I were a betting man, I would bet that this will soon become your favorite hive tool as well because of the J-hook portion of it. So again, uh, the disadvantage, I'll start off with the disadvantage of this. The disadvantage is when you're using this to scrape off propolis and wax, it's almost like a traditional chisel and you have a tendency to dig down into the wood more. So you damage your, your hive components a lot more easily uh, compared to the scraper, which is a lot more controlled. So, um, I personally don't like it for that. Um, but again, as I told you earlier, it has the J hook. It has this little notch so that way you can use it kind of like the traditional L shape for your leverage action to help separate the frames 
if you need to. Again, because it has this nice flat chisel portion, you can still go down in between the frame tabs to separate the frames by the, from the propolis. Again, so I use it like that. Again, I slid everything over as I did previously with the L-shaped hive tool. I just slid everything over to one side. That way it gives me more room to pull this frame out in case of burr comb um, in between the outer wall and this first frame. And then so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the J-hook portion. I'm gonna come underneath the tab of the frame, this little um, piece, horizontal piece, in between the end bar and the high body itself. And I'm gonna pry it up. You'll see I'm using lever action against the nearby frame and nearby outer wall. Uh, one caution of all frames, now to think about it, is you never wanna use this horizontal prying action against the outer wall of your high body because what you could do is you could actually cause this high body to split apart. Um, so when you're doing it, make sure you're only doing it from frame to frame. So again, a frame is $2 versus uh, $15 if you're, buying, if you're not making them yourself. If I make, when I make my high bodies, they're about $8.50 to make. Uh, it's not a big deal. But again, never do the outside because you could split it off. Um, so again, getting back to how to use it, I'm just simply going to take the hook going on, hooking it in, coming underneath the frame, in tab, and then, sorry, I got a yellow jacket flying around my head. Um, so from here, I just lift pry straight up until I can reach down and grab it with two fingers, my uh, finger and thumb, and then I shift down to the other end. Again, position it between the frame in tab, the frame in bars, and the high body, pry straight up from there. Once I get it, that horizontal tab of the frame above the high body, my technique is I'll raise up the rear of the frame a little bit and I'll push it forward just a little bit simply so that this frame is now pushed resting on the high body. And then from there, if I wanted to, I could just set the hive tool down or most of the time I just reposition. It gives me a better chance to get better control. I'll reach down and grab the frame with three fingers now and I'll raise it back up horizontal. So lower the, the tail. And then once the frame is horizontal, and centered between the space between the wall and the nearest frame, I lift straight up. What that's going to do is that's going to minimize uh, the chance of rolling a queen should she be nearby. Uh, again, just to show you why this is not inside the high body, you'll see the beauty of this high tool is you're going to come in horizontal like this and rotate it in. And then from there, you can lift straight up on it. You can see I can even control it somewhat with this, but most of my control is with my rear hand here until I can reposition and grab. And that's how you use the traditional tools. Um, and again, much like the L-shaped hive tool, again, I can simply come in at an angle on the uh, between the high bodies and pry down, and it basically props this up, kind of lever action, and pops the... Uh, high body off and again I may have come have to come to the opposite side if the bees have got the high bodies really propolis down uh, and that is basically how to use a hive tool all right uh, thanks for watching mm -hmm.